<clears throat> Hello. Um, so in this section, we're going to talk about what linear linear operators are. Um, and kind of the goal of this whole chapter is to start solving some of the PDEs that we've seen um, already. And so one of the key notions is kind of linearity of the operators in question, which in our case would be something like these differential operators or this heat operator, which we'll write down here soon. And so what this notion of linearity of this operator will let us do is kind of piece together a bunch of solutions, add them together um, to get maybe a solution that we actually care about. Um, but in this section, we're just setting the stage, giving some definitions and kind of getting in the right sort of mindset to start thinking about um, differential operators as linear operators. Um, you may have seen uh, matrices acting on vectors. And that's kind of your experience with linear operators. So here we're going to try to translate some of um, that experience to, again, the situation of differential operators. Okay. Um, okay, so what is an operator? Well, in a very general formulation, it's just some map or some function that you plug in something and then it spits out something else. Okay. Um, which is usually how we define what a function is. Um, and so one example is, well, differential operators, right? Plug in a function, um, you know, smooth enough function, you get back some other uh, smooth enough function. Okay. Um, what are other examples? Well, kind of the the... Um, example that I was getting at at the very start is this notion of a linear operator. Okay, so what is a linear operator? Um, well, if our operator we're going to call L, okay, acting on a space, so it could be a space of functions, it could be a space of vectors, um, it could be a space of numbers, I don't know, just some operator acting on some space. We say that this operator L is linear. It satisfy, satisfies um, this rule. Okay. Um, okay. So L is linear if this equation holds. Okay. So if we apply our operator L to um, kind of a sum of these vectors where U1 and U2 say are vectors or kind of objects in the space where we're allowed to add objects together, like functions or you know, um, vectors as we usually understand them um, or think of them, finite dimensional vectors, then, right, apply L to this linear combination, the output is going to be exactly the linear combination of kind of L acting on the individual vectors, okay? So here, U1, U2 are vectors, C1 and C2 are constants or scalars. So apply L to the sum. This scalar is gonna pull out. L is gonna distribute over the sum, or actually I should have said, L is gonna distribute over the sum. Okay, so actually, yeah, let me write out the steps. So we're gonna get, this here is, L of something plus L of something, where the first something is C1, U1, and then the second something is um, C2, U2. So in this first step, what I did, distribute L across the sum, which is part of being a linear operator. Um, so this is that distribution. And now in each of these pieces, we can take the scalar and pull it out. That's another part of being a linear operator. And so we end up with this piece right here, okay? So linearity just means, right, you can distribute L across sums and you can pull out scalars, okay? um, as you've probably seen in your linear algebra course. Okay, um, so what are some examples of linear operators? 
Well, one you're probably very familiar with is if you just take a matrix. Okay? So here, A is going to be a matrix. The coefficients of A are going to be little a sub j, or little a uh, subscript ij. Okay? I usually denotes kind of the row you're on. J denotes which column you're looking at. Okay. Um, and so if A is an M by N matrix, where M is a number of rows, N is a number of columns. Um, in this case, A corresponds to a linear operator sending an N dimensional vector to an M dimensional vector, where this linear operation is just, right, a times your vector, vector multiplication, okay? Um, so this is an example from right, linear algebra. Um, an example closer to what we're interested in is following. So ddx is an operator, plug in a differentiable function, you get out a differentiable function, at least, so how I've written it, thinking of a, a differentiable function in x or in one variable. And so the operator here, L is D dx, where L of u is going to be uh, D dx of u, which we could also write as u prime. Um, I guess another notation would be u dot, depending on yeah, how, how you want to treat these things. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's just another, another example of. Um, an operator. Am I doing examples of linear operator? So linear operator. Um, why is this linear? Well, right, if you take the derivative of a sum of two functions, okay, this is going to be ddx of the first function plus ddx of the second function, okay, this piece here is L of U1 plus U2, for example. This piece down here is L of U1 plus L of U2, right? Or again, L is this DDX, okay? So that's another example of a um, linear operator. In this case, that's uh, acting on functions, okay? And so then the third example, it's the closest to what we're interested in, this is the heat operator. Okay. So this operator we're going to call L. What does L do? Well, take the time derivative of whatever function you plug in and then subtract K times the second derivative in X. Okay. Um, and so, right, it's an operator. What does it act on? Well, it acts on differentiable functions in this case of two variables, right? And then it outputs another differentiable function where the operation is, so L of U, how do we read this thing? What does this notation mean? Well, um, this notation means, again, take the time derivative of U, subtract off K times the second spatial derivative of U. Um, okay, so motivated then by we said about this, okay? um, what you'll notice is that, well, the, this heat operator, this thing here, it's linear. Okay? Well, how do we see that? Well, here's a piece that we care about. And so these should be U1, U2 with those dark colors. Okay? So if we just say, well, what is the operator evaluated? at this linear combination, two functions. Um, well, plugging in the definition, we're gonna get something like this, right? So we're plugging in the function u, taking the time derivative, and then we're subtracting k times the second spatial derivative of the function we're plugging in. Right? Um, okay, well, this is a linear operator, right? Just the derivative, derivatives are linear. Um, this is also a linear operator because we're multiplying by a scalar and then we're taking 
kind of two subsequent derivatives, but these two derivatives we're taking, in this case, they're both linear. So what we end up with is if we write things out, we're gonna get all of these terms, right? So um, this is that, this, uh, that is that, and then this piece is that, this piece is that, okay? So we're just distributing each of these linear operators in here, distributing them among these linear combinations. We reorganize everything. We're gonna get this. So here, what we're doing is we're collecting the U1 pieces. Actually, we're collecting the U1 pieces over here and then factoring out the C1. Um, we can do the same thing with the U2 pieces. So take that U2 minus that U2, that's that. And then once we brought those together, then we can factor out these C2s. Okay. Um, but we end up with something like this. Okay. So now the observation is, well, uh, this looks really familiar. This is essentially how we define the heat operator, right? Take the time derivative of the function, subtract k times the second spatial derivative of the function. This right here was L of u1 by definition. Okay. So if we make that translation once more, then we get this expression. Okay. So scrolling all the way back up to the top, taking the term that we started with, bring it down, we conclude that, at least for the heat operator, L of, or yeah, so we conclude that at least for the heat operator, it's, it's linear. And that we saw by explicitly, right, writing out pieces and collecting terms, whatever. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, right, so how are we gonna kind of use these concepts? Well, if we're studying partial differential equations and we're talking about linear operators, um, that motivates talking about linear equations. Okay, so what is a linear equation? Um, it's just anything of the form linear operator applied to an unknown object or vector is equal to some given object or vector. Okay. So a linear equation is anything of this form where again, this is a linear operator, U is unknown, F is given. So what are some examples of um, what are some examples of linear equations? Okay. Um, so the first example is, well, suppose our linear operator L is a matrix. So again, A is equal to um, kind of a matrix where we call the entries A sub IJ. Um, in this case, the matrix A is going to act on a vector U. It's going to output a vector. So U and F are gonna be vectors. And so if we look back up, right? So L applied to U is equal to F. In this matrix formulation, we're gonna end up with A times U, right? Or L applied to U, in this case, L is A and the operation of right, matrix acting on a vector is matrix multiplication. Um, so this is what we end up with. A times U is equal to F. Um, but we can interpret this as a system of linear equations, okay? So this is hopefully familiar from, um, or ringing some bells from linear algebra. An example closer to what we care about is the following. So L is now gonna be the heat operator. Or again, call that. So um, in this case, L is, d dt minus k d squared dx squared. Okay. So L is a heat operator. Heat operator acts on functions of two variables, x and t, at least how we've written it. Um, and then it spits out another function of x and t. So in this case, the linear equation we get is, you know, it looks like this. This is exactly what we had written before. Um, 
But if we write out what this piece is, okay, right, this piece is coming from that, uh, we get this expression, right? So u is a function of two variables. So we get time derivative in u minus k times the second spatial derivative of u. All of this here is just coming from L applied to u. We're saying that's equal to this given function f. Well, f is equal to a function of x and t. Well, f is a function of x and t. Okay. Um, so this and this are equivalent, but we can rearrange it a little bit to get this term, right? Where um, this expression here is probably a little more familiar, right? Where we have time derivative, diffusion piece, plus the source term from, from the, for the heat equation. Okay. Um, so the heat equation that we've been looking at for a while is an example of a linear equation um, just involving differentiable functions. Okay. Um, so here are two questions. Okay, well, what if the piece, right? So if we're looking at L of U is equal to F. Um, so, right, what if our given is zero? Well, in this case, um, we'd call the resulting linear equation homogeneous um, or homogeneous. I think technically homogeneous is a different word. I think they're the same. Um, Anyways, I'll probably jump back and forth between calling it homogeneous or homogeneous. They refer to the same concept, which is F is equal to zero in this linear equation, okay? And so what if that's not the case? What if F is not zero? Well, in that case, we call the linear equation non-homogeneous or non-homogeneous. Okay, well, so what are some facts about homogeneous equations? Okay, so the first fact is that, right, um, u, u equals zero or the trivial solution is always a solution to a homogeneous equation uh, when L is uh, linear. So let me clarify when L is linear. But if we're talking about homogeneous equations, then the fact that it's linear equation is already kind of implicit, okay? Um, and so in this case, actually the proof's not bad. It's kind of quick. Right, well, okay, well, what is this object L of zero? Zero is zero plus zero, right? So we can rewrite this as this. L is a linear operator, so L distributes so L of zero plus zero is equal to L of zero plus L of zero. So what we get is that L of zero is equal to L of zero plus L of zero. Right. That's written there. Okay. So now the question is, right, our question is, well, what, what exactly is this? Can this be non-zero? Well, whatever object this is, right, if we subtract it from both sides, right? So here minus L of zero, here minus L of zero. So this L of zero is gonna cancel say with that. The L of zero over here is just gonna cancel with that. So we're gonna get that's zero, that's zero. What we're left with is, well, L of zero has to be zero. Okay. So just, uh, exercise in properties of linear linear operators. So the second fact is a little more important for what we need this concept for. And so that's to notice that, well, if L of U1 is zero and L of U2 is zero, then L applied to any linear combination of U1 and U2 is also going to be zero. Okay. Um, and so this is something that we're gonna call the principle of superposition, okay? Um, if you have, right, solu uh, two solutions to a homogeneous equation, 
then their linear combination is also a solution to homogeneous equation. I think that's what's written here. Yeah. U1 and U2 both satisfy this homogeneous equation, which is L of U is equal to zero. Then their linear combination will also solve that. Okay. Um, this is also just an exercise in linearity. Okay. Take this L, distribute it across that summation, pull these scalars out. You're going to be left with something of the form C1, L of U1 plus C2, L of U2. Actually, let me write it. Um, right here. So we have L of C1, U1 plus C2, U2. This is L of C1, U1 plus L of C2, U2. Now we factor out those scalars. So we get C1, L of U1 plus C2, L of U2. Okay. But by assumption, L of U1 is zero, L of U2 is zero. So that's zero, that's zero. And we're left with zero plus zero, which is zero. Okay. So that's, I guess, a proof of this principle of superposition. Okay, so um, yeah. So one thing to keep in mind is that all of these notions of linearity and homogeneity um, or property of being homogeneous, they also apply to boundary conditions that we can impose for um, differential equations. Okay? Um, and so kind of as an example, here are three boundary conditions. So here we prescribe the, the value at one endpoint. Here we prescribe the um, kind of flux at an endpoint and say that the flux, so flux is proportional to the temperature at that endpoint. And then finally, we say, well, what if this derivative is equal to the value at that endpoint squared? Okay. Um, so in this case, this is linear. So the first one is linear, linear condition, um, right? Because here we're applying an operator there. But the operator isn't really doing anything. It's just keeping the function as it is. Um, it's linear, but it's non-homogeneous. I'll just write non-hom. Okay. For the second one, this is also linear. But in this case, this is homogeneous, right? Because if we plug in instead of U, um, right, if we plug in U as say U1 plus U2, for example, right? Just a, some sum of functions then this piece here is linear, right? What happens to the U right here? Well, it's just gonna be the sum and then this H is gonna distribute across the sum, U1 and U2. Okay. Um, and so then we're going to end up with um, kind of the sum also solving this condition, okay? Um, why is it homogeneous? Well, we can write this as minus k zero um, ddx applied to u lt minus h times u of lt is equal to zero. And so if L is the operator minus k zero ddx minus h, then um, all right, this whole thing is equal to L of U is equal to zero. Okay. So we can we can take this boundary condition 
And we can write it as a linear operator acting on our unknown function u is equal to zero, which is how we defined a homogeneous um, uh, linear equation. So finally, color this is nonlinear. Because if we take, if we um, substitute or set u say is equal to u1 plus u2, right? So this piece is gonna be fine, right? Because ddx is a linear operator. This piece is not gonna be fine, right? So the reason is, well, a plus b squared, this is not the same as a squared plus b squared, right? Um, so squaring isn't linear. Okay. And so since over here, we have this operator that's acting in a way that's not linear, um, this whole thing can't be, cannot be linear. Since this whole thing is not linear, it doesn't make sense to say whether or not this is homogeneous or non-homogeneous, okay? Because those are words restricted for linear equations. Um, okay, so why do we care about all this? Well, the key thing of all of this is this principle of superposition, as I said. Um, how we're going to use this is we're gonna say, well, um, kind of let's solve the heat equation, say even just the homogeneous heat equation where our source term is zero. Um, let's solve this in some special circumstances to get a bunch of possible solutions to these homogeneous equations, okay? And so then the question is, well, what is the solution to the problem that we actually care about? Let's figure out what constants we need so if we take a linear combination of these solutions that we found, we can add them together in the right way to get the solution that we actually care about. Okay. And so then that's something that we'll start talking about um, in the next video, in the next section.